This video is for educational purposes only and only competent persons should attempt the installations shown in this video. Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel and today I'm going to be putting a ground fault circuit interrupter receptacle and a regular receptacle right next to each other in a box like this, a dual gang box in a garage. And these house wires, which we call the line wires, have to go to the ground fault circuit interrupter and they go on the line portion. That's the upper portion here, it's the line portion and then we're going to use the load portion to go over to the receptacle. I've already got a few pigtails on here. You're going to need four pigtails to do this job. You need two green ground type pigtails, one white neutral pigtail and one black hot pigtail. I've gone ahead and put the ground wire on here and I'm going to show you how we're going to hook that up but it's it's connected down here to the green terminal. So there's your ground wire. This is the load portion of the GFCI and we got the white pigtail stemming from the silver terminal and the silver terminal is on the side of the longer slot and because these are 20 amp receptacles, there'd be a 20 amp GFCI and a 20 amp standard receptacle, the slot has a T shape in it. So I attach the white neutral pigtail to the load terminal, which is the silver terminal of the GFCI, and I have a black hot pigtail stemming from the load terminal with the bronze colored screw. And on the receptacle, all I have is a green grounding pigtail. So that's where I am right now. Uh, the, the box here has a 12 gauge Romex cable coming out of it. So the circuit breaker is off, but we always double check. So this is my Fluke 1AC voltage sensor, and I'm going to try it out there. And I put my Fluke 117 electrician's meter across the wires, and we had 0.0, .0 volts. So the circuit breaker is definitely off. I'm going to be putting the GFCI on the left side and the regular receptacle on the right side. So I'm going to set this up the way we're going to do it. It's going to be like this. You see, we're going to have the neutral over here and the hot over here. You see, the, the ground wire is going to go straight to the back. So that kind of sets it up the way we want it. So now we just kind of put this right in here like this and see here's our here's our white wire and it's going to go right here to the silver colored terminal of the receptacle. So I'm going to tighten that down. And then after you've tightened it down, always give it a tug. Okay, tug. Arr! See, it's really good. Okay, so now your black pigtail is going to go right here. See how that goes? And I'm doing all this wiring before it goes in the box. I think it's faster that way. So you can do it in the box. It's not a problem. I like to get a little head start on this stuff. Okay, nice and tight. Give it a tug. So here's what it's going to be like, just like this. And our jumpers are going whoop, whoop. <laughs> now we're going to hook up the grounds. Here's our bare ground wire right here. And this is a three conductor Wago lever nut. And I'm going to take it and put that right on there like that. And then, so here's the two grounds from the devices right here. And so I'm going to put one right in here, click it down. And I'll put the other one right in here and click it down. Okay, so our grounds are hooked up. So I'm going to push these back in the back of the box. Now we're going to be hooking up these line wires here and here to the line portion of the GFCI. So we're going to take the white neutral. We're going to put it to the silver terminal of the line side. Okay. And we're going to tighten it down really good. Ugh. Here, a tug. Okay. And here's your black hot wire coming from the house. So this goes to right here. <clears throat> All right. 
So we're all wired up. We have the ground. We have the line wire from the house going to the line portion of the GFCI. We have the wires going over to the receptacle coming from the load portion of the GFCI. So now we just have to dress the wires so they go in here relatively easily. But before I install them in the gang box, I'm going to use some black electrician's tape around the terminals of the devices for safety. So now it's time for the cover. I have now turned on the circuit breaker and I'm going to press the reset button right there. Okay, we've got a little green light that shows it's operating properly. And this is my outlet tester. Plug her in. Two green lights on this outlet tester. That means it's wired correctly. So let's press the let's press the test button. All right, that works fine. So let's plug into the receptacle and we're going to press the reset button again. And once again, we have the correct reading. It's correctly wired. So now I'm going to press test on the GFCI and this should go out. And if it does, that means that this receptacle is protected by this GFCI. There you go. It works great. And the lower part of the receptacle is also off and it also goes back on when it's reset. So this receptacle has earned its GFCI protected outlet sticker. I'll put links in my video description for the Fluke 1AC voltage sensor. And we'll put a link for the ideal circuit breaker finder kit. The smaller part is the transmitter and it's also a really good outlet tester. And I'll put links for the Leviton 20 amp tamper proof GFCI. And I'll put a link for the Leviton tamper proof spec grade Decora Plus receptacle. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.